Well, one of the, the studies that I've uh, recently published is a study where we looked at uh, the reasons why many electronic cigarette users find these products so successful uh, in helping them to, to quit smoking. Uh, we did focus group interviews with 11 different uh, electronic cigarette users. And um, basically based on these, these uh, focus groups, we were able to uh, identify common themes that seem to be um, common among all, all of these users. And um, some of the things that we identified were quite interesting. Um, so one of the things that we found uh, was that the, um, the users uh, uniformly viewed electronic cigarettes as being more effective than nicotine replacement therapy. Many of them had used NRT in the past unsuccessfully. And so what is it that's different about electronic cigarettes um, that made it more successful, more effective for these people? So one of the things was that the product simulates actual smoking. And uh, many of the respondents told us that the physical sensations of holding the cigarette, putting it into their mouth, um, exhaling, um, that, that that is all part of the smoking experience of the smoking addiction to them. And that um, by simulating that, it was able to replace um, smoking in a way that NRT can't possibly do. Another theme was that there is an identity uh, to, to being an electronic cigarette user. You're a vapor. It's an identity. The behavior you're engaging in is vaping. You know, there's a whole vocabulary that's built up around um, the vaping community. There are support groups, so there's a social aspect to it. Uh, there's a lot of social support. You don't see that with a nicotine patch. You know, there's no nicotine patch support group, uh, or there's no nicotine patch users forum on the internet that I'm aware of. Uh, whereas there is, you know, there's vapors forum and, and e-cigarette forum and, and lots of online, vibrant online communities uh, which provide support uh, but they're really, when you're using an electronic cigarette, it's more than, it, it gives you an identity. It's not, you're not so much as just quitting smoking as you're developing a new identity as a vapor. Um, the other thing that we found, which was fascinating to me, was that there are uh, elements of kind of a hobby that are uh, part of the experience. So choosing your electronic uh, the liquid that you're going to use, choosing the flavors, uh, deciding on what type of system you're going to use. There are a lot of decisions that, that go into it. Um, and that makes this kind of a, a hobby, you know, just like as if you're doing any other hobby that involves um, collecting things or, you know, making decisions about things. You, it, it creates a level of individual uh, involvement uh, and individual engagement in the process, which you don't see with, with NRT. And so that was another thing that was perceived as, um, as being part of the, the effectiveness of these products. And the last thing we found was that um, the, there's a difference between smoking addiction and nicotine addiction. And there are a large number of smokers who simply don't want to give up the nicotine. That that's, to them, it's just a really important part of the experience and it, it's not that they really want the cigarettes anymore um, but they do want the nicotine and so these products give them an opportunity to uh, to get the nicotine and to essentially become smoke free without becoming nicotine free uh, and so that was another attractive feature so I think that the way that this research really changes the the field of tobacco control is that it really takes away this perception that smoking addiction is simply an addiction to nicotine, and that if you just replace the nicotine, uh, that you have, you have conquered the addiction. And I think it, it um, forces us to recognize that smoking addiction is not just a pharmacologic addiction, it's also a behavioral, physical, and social addiction. There are lots of reinforcing aspects of the, of the behavior. Uh, and that you need to replace all of them, you need to treat all of them. And uh, the reason why electronic cigarettes are uh, taking off, I, th I believe, is because they address not only the pharmacologic, but all also these other aspects of the addiction. Absolutely. I think there is a, a general assumption uh, that is driving the national predominance of, uh, of focus on NRT as, a, as the 
centerpiece of the nation's smoking cessation strategy. And that assumption is that nicotine is really the, the essence of smoking addiction, uh, that this is a pharmacologic addiction. And if you just replace the nicotine, that you can uh, cure the addiction. Uh, I think that's an assumption that has been uh, within the tobacco control community. And I think it's just, it's just not the case. If you talk to smokers, my experience talking to smokers, interviewing smokers, treating smokers in the past has been that uh, there's a lot more to this addiction than just the nicotine. There's uh, physical aspects of holding cigarette, the mouth uh, sensations, the, the, the puffing, the exhaling, inhaling. There's even the throat hit. A lot of the vapors we talked to talked about the, the importance of the throat hit. Um, so there's a lot of the physical aspects of this, uh, behavioral aspects of the addiction. And, and they're just as important as the nicotine addiction. And so nicotine replacement therapy is simply not going to be able to address those aspects of the addiction. I shared with the audience today data showing that uh, replacing nicotine actually is not sufficient to cure the nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Um, but interestingly, the converse is also the case that giving people uh, cigarettes without nicotine, so sham cigarettes essentially, is able to address many of the, prevent many of the withdrawal symptoms. Even though the person's not getting any nicotine, you're actually curing or preventing a lot of their withdrawal symptoms. And how can you possibly explain that? And I think the way you can explain that is by understanding that uh, smoking addiction is a complex phenomenon involving pharmacology, but also physical, behavioral, and social stimuli. And if you address those physical and behavioral and social stimuli, you actually can, uh, can prevent cigarette craving, uh, even in the absence of nicotine. Now, I'm not suggesting that that, that should be done, uh, but it does suggest that the combination of, of provision of nicotine combined with uh, replacement of the smoking experience is really, I think, the ultimate, the ultimate treatment. And I think that's why electronic cigarettes have been so successful. And, and this is why I view products like electronic cigarettes as the wave of the future. Yeah, I, you know, I think that there are individual differences between smokers, and there's a continuum where, for some smokers, the, the nicotine is the, the hallmark of the addiction, and for at the other end of the ex spectrum, it's people who are, uh, you know, affected more by the behavior, and the nicotine is a little bit less important. Uh, and so I think not everybody is going to be able to quit in the same way, and people need to have a range of options available to them. And I've never argued that, you know, NRT should not be available. Obviously, it's, it's out there, it's very popular, and, and it should be. Um, I think the important point is that smokers have as many options that, that, that they can, and that they should be able to choose and tailor their, their treatment to what works best for them. Um, but certainly, for smokers who fail using NRT or other traditional uh, methods of smoking cessation, the availability of electronic cigarettes could be a lifesaver, and it is a lifesaver for many, many people. Uh, because they've tried all these other methods and have not succeeded. And so having a product that can actually uh, replace cigarette smoking, the behavior for them, is, is I think, a godsend for many people. Uh, and so uh, there are, there are th literally thousands of people who have failed using uh, traditional means who have finally found something that gives them some hope. So the idea that the, that the government may take these off the market or restrict them or severely restrict the kinds of claims that, that companies can make in terms of the truthful aspects of, of what their products offer, I think is, is, is unfortunate and is, and is a risk that I hope that the, um, that the FDA will not, you know, I hope it's uh, something the FDA will not fall into this trap um, of putting the, um, the ideology of preventing nicotine addiction mm -hmm. above the, the best interests of the public. Well, I think it's pretty clear to me at this point that some sort of tobacco-free cigarette alternative device is going to be the wave of the future. And whether it's the current electronic cigarette or some uh, innovative improvement upon this product. 
I think that clearly the wave of the future is, is some variant of this product, if not the type of products that exist today, or maybe a range of products that people can choose from, depending on their, on their tastes. And I think that uh, we need to do everything that we can to uh, allow innovation in this category. Um, anything that the FDA does which stifles innovation or stifles new products, um, it stifles the claims that these uh, products can make, truthful claims about the improvement that they can uh, uh, offer to smokers in terms of the effectiveness of treating smoking and also the fact that they're a lot safer than, than cigarettes, um, I think would be unfortunate. Uh, so it's, it, it's clear to me um, from this conference talking to many electronic cigarette uh, manufacturers and many people in other aspects of the industry that, that this is really a thriving uh, industry that uh, is, has, shows incredible promise, that is really very serious about its quality control and its standards uh, and is you know, searching consistently, constantly, for, um, for the best of, of safety and, eff and effect eff efficacy. Um, so I think it's an industry that's here to stay. I think that it's, this is the wave of the future. Uh, I think it's very significant that now all three major tobacco companies are in the electronic cigarette business. I think that that's a sign that, um, that they realize that this is, this is for real. This is going to be here. Uh, that it's going to take significant market share away from cigarettes and therefore uh, better that they should have enjoy some of the profits from that um, from that to offset the decreases in, in cigarette sales um, and it's just my hope that the rest of the public health community that the public health community can uh, can kind of see the writing on the wall and 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 realize that they've got to get on board you know it's kind of ironic to me that the anti-smoking groups, the public health groups, are the last to come on board to this, to this product. So you're thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure.